the darkness at thy speaking it was done. Welcome to sermons from Zion Lutheran Church of Gwinner, North Dakota. Zion Lutheran Church is committed to the message of Christ crucified for the forgiveness of sins, for the church and the world. The following sermon is from Rev. Dr. Matthew Richard. The epistle is from Philippians, the second chapter. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. My friends, over the last 300 years, we have witnessed the tragedy of power. Brute force imposed on people to secure power. In the 18th century, we saw how Europeans enslaved Africans, putting them into slavery by force, In the 19th century, we witnessed the conflict with Native Americans resulting in many Native Americans being uprooted by power. And who can forget? (laughs) Who can forget the 20th century? In the 20th century, Nazi Germans declared the Jews as disloyal to the modern nation, superstitious and irrational, leading to some 6 million Jews executed. While Hitler and his regime rose to power. And there was Stalin and Mao, along with the millions of dead victims who stood in the path of their power. Now, this quest for power, dominance, and majesty are not just something that is a phenomenon of the past 300 years, but it actually continues to this day. For example, we see ISIS attacks, We remember and recall all of those. North Korea missile tests, international currency wars, and so on and on and on and on. All of this is just a mad rush of mankind to be king of the hill, to have power, to have control and majesty at all costs. There's no doubt about it. Mankind has a large appetite for power and majesty. Instead of fearing and loving and trusting in God above all things, a person will attempt to get everybody and everything around them to fear, love, and trust themselves. And so we humans, yes, we humans, we grab for power. We have an appetite for power. We have an appetite for majesty. We look out for ourselves. We are number one. And everybody around us is number two, and three, and four, and five. But, yes, but, this is not how it is with Jesus. This indeed was not how it was with Jesus, though. Praise be to God that Jesus is not like us. You see, according to our epistle lesson from Philippians, Jesus took the form of a servant by ceasing to use his powers as the Son of God. Now, we must pause a moment and be very careful to note at this point in time that Jesus never ceased to be the Son of God, not even on the cross. But he did abstain from using his full powers as God while he was on earth. For example... Sometimes Jesus did not know certain facts, even though at any time he could have used his unlimited knowledge as God. And sometimes Jesus was tired or hungry or thirsty, even though God by nature is never tired, hungry, or thirsty. And get this, God does not bleed. God does not suffer. God does not die. 
But Jesus, who is true God, yes, Jesus, who is true God and true man, bled and suffered and died for you because he took the form of a servant. Unlike humanity, Jesus does not have some unhealthy appetite for majesty. While walking on this earth, Jesus did not grab at power, for he already had power. Indeed, instead of grabbing for power, what Jesus did was to abstain from using his power as he came in humility, yes, as he came in humility to serve mankind, to serve us. Jesus acted as if he were not God by laying his majesty down so that he could carry the heavy burdens that belong to us. Specifically, those burdens of sin and death and damnation. That is to say, Jesus did not need to suffer. These burdens were not his to carry. However, he chose to carry these burdens. He chose to suffer. Christ Jesus, the only man who could choose not to die, chose the worst death possible to save you and to save me too. What a contrast, my friends, from sinful mankind. Instead of stomping upon sinful mankind in a selfish pursuit of power, Jesus claimed sinful mankind instead. Yes, he claimed mankind even though mankind would stomp on him. Yes, even though he was holy and sinless, Jesus still claimed us. Jesus willingly made himself one of us. In other words, Jesus lived among us for about 30 years He was one of us, even though his divinity was incredibly far above us. And on that cross, Jesus embraced all of mankind so that all of our sins and the weight of our guilt fell upon him. But what does this mean, though, concerning this Palm Sunday? Well, today we heard in our gospel reading that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. However, this was Jesus as a servant. This was Jesus coming in humility, just like we heard in our epistle lesson from Philippians. Yes, when Jesus came into Jerusalem on a donkey, he was abstaining from his power and majesty. For he could have ridden upon the backs of mighty angels into Jerusalem that day. Furthermore, Jesus also rides into Jerusalem to present himself to God the Father as the sacrifice to atone for the sins of the entire world. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. In other words, Jesus lowers himself to the level of a dumb animal whose only purpose is to be slaughtered. Jesus lowers himself, humbles himself to death, to be slaughtered on that cross for you and for me. And there's more. At the same time that Jesus suffers at the hands of sinful men, Jesus is also preserving their lives and the lives of all living creatures. As those nails and those thorns are driven into his holy flesh, the Son of God is keeping the universe from collapsing into ultimate chaos. The lowly Son of Man, who looks like nothing but a pathetic dying carpenter's son, is the great God who protects and defends the world even when that world turns upon him and kills him. Dear friends, Jesus did not grab for power because he was already powerful. And yet even though he was all powerful and all majestic, he laid it all down to serve you and me. And because of this, God the Father exalted him. Now, Jesus, who is resurrected from the dead, is seated at the right hand of the Father. Yes, Jesus remains a man and also remains the Son of God. That is how he will be forever. And so today, we hear about our humble servant coming into Jerusalem to accomplish our salvation, while at the same time knowing that Jesus is no longer in the form of a servant, that is right, that Jesus is now highly exalted. As a highly exalted one, the saints and the angels in heaven, they bow down before him as Jesus shines before them in the unveiled form of God. 
And we too here right now in this place do the same. We come before the Lord in his sanctuary. We confess our sins. We bow our heads. We sing our praises to him. And we receive Jesus' presence in the Holy Supper because he is our mighty, majestic, and powerful Lord who is for us. So dear baptized saints, Jesus could have remained as he was before the creation of the world the glorious Son of God who had no flesh and no sufferings. But even when he became man, when he was born into that manger, Jesus did not have to suffer or diminish his glory in any way. He could have remained in his majesty and power, but he chose the form of a servant. He chose weakness. He chose pain. He chose death. He chose all of this for you and for me too. He grabbed not for power but he grabbed for sinners. He grabbed sinners like me and sinners like you to redeem and give his majesty, that majesty being the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you for listening to today's podcast sermon. You can access a full manuscript of today's sermon from Pastor Matthew Richard's blog at www.pastormattrichard.org or visit Zion Lutheran Church's website at www.zionwinner.org. The Lord bless and keep you.